If you were a big guy, you would understand the problem. Hi everybody, I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And this is the Concept Crucible Podcast. And today we're going to be talking about something that's near and dear to our hearts as large men. Yes. Very Pants. near and dear. Well, um, I was going to say food. Oh, yeah, no, you food, food. I mean, other than genetics, you don't really get to be a large individual without the assistance of food. Mm. So, I mean, I mean, we're both tall. I don't know how you got tall because your mom is like... Smooth. My understanding is that my father is quite tall. Okay. I, I Both of my parents are reasonably tall, but I'm, I'm taller than both of them, so... Yeah. We, we blame Chernobyl, oddly enough. My mom was in Eastern Europe when Chernobyl blew, and so the joke is is that we got a dose of radiation. Were, for, were you a Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ryan? Well, I was teenage. Sometimes I was a, a mutant. <laughs> ninja might be a little... Coming to a theater near you, Teenage Mutant Ninja Huckle. It's not nearly as interesting as the name implies. Well, fair. Uh, no, we're talking about food. Yeah, and our relationship to it. Yes. Icebreaker. Yeah. What is the worst... Like, as an adult, mm-hmm. as a child, doesn't count. Yeah. Like, that time I made my mom toast with moldy bread. <laughs> um, the, given the argument that some of the bread came with jam already on it. Yeah. Um, Green jelly. I was... No, I, it, it looked blue to me. I'm also <laughs> deeply colorblind. <laughs> um, but... Um, um, given, given the, the, besides the, the, it didn't taste like jam when I tried it. Probably not. Uh, as an adult, what is the worst thing you have ever made? Um, so yeah, not, as, as you know, if you follow me on social media, I do make a lot of food. Oh my God. This guy takes so much, so many pictures of his food. See, here's, here's where I justify it to myself is that I'm taking pictures of food that I made. I'm not taking pictures of food that I'm about to eat, necessarily. I don't think you need to justify it at all. You can take pictures of whatever you want. Well, I feel like I need to justify it because I still have a, like, tension in my mind that I'm just being one of those douchebags. Ah, you just need to get in touch with your inner Kanye West. Maybe, maybe. You know, sometimes I actually admire him. I, I admire Kanye West a great deal. Yeah. Uh, He's, I, I, fully, I feel that he is the most adapted man for the 21st century. Yeah. And the fact that that bothers people we have is talk- a subject for another video. We have talked about that, and- not, but uh, not, not to go too deeply down into that. No, no, uh, well, uh, we'll do that. We'll do that in another video. That'll be a, a fun vlog. That would be. But yeah, so uh, the worst thing you've ever made so is yeah. so yeah. Not everything that I make necessarily tastes good, but I'm always the one who consumes it. But I can say unequivocally, the thing that flopped the most <clears throat> was the time that I <clears throat> tried to make fudge. Um, you know, because uh, uh, they do it at UW, and then they do it at Conestoga. You know, at the beginning of the term, you'll have the parade of people. You'll have um, the poster person comes in. You'll have sometimes the video games person who comes in, like the the guy who brings the posters like to the SLC. Oh yes, yeah, so yes. Same deal at Conestoga. You'll have in the main student concourse area, somebody will come in and set up a poster shop, and then a couple weeks later, sometimes a video game guy, and then as well, I've seen them at UW. The fudge person, usually it's the fudge lady, although I've, they could be other people. They'll set up that stand with like the pink banners or whatever, and they'll have that giant display case of fudge. And there was one time they were at Conestoga at work, and I thought, you know what, like I could make fudge. You know, like, Google's my friend. My Google foo is strong, so I will find a recipe, a simple recipe for fudge, and I will make fudge. Mm-hmm. And I tried. And it didn't solidify, and so it ended up being kind of a really thick molassesy chocolate sauce with like walnuts in it, and um, and I made it with uh, the. It was the first time I'd ever worked with like marshmallow fluff mm. um, instead of like using whole milk or whatever. The recipe called for that, so yeah. Um, I ate it, not in one go, uh, but I slowly ate it because I'm like, well, I made it, and it's really sugary and tasty, no. so I will still eat it. But, yeah, when instead of, like, cutting it nicely after it had set, which it never set, but assuming it would have set, it, you know, you'd be able to lift out a nice whole piece of fudge. No, instead I kind of, like, scooped it, and it would just, you know, it had a really nice solid consistency, and then it would just kind of melt. So next time you do that, freeze it? 
I I should have froze it. Yeah, but, um, but it just didn't set. I I have a tragic fudge story. Oh, um, I I have never made fudge in my life, but every year so for as long as I can remember, my mom mm-hmm. has made fudge. Um, every Christmas, mm-hmm. and once, uh, this meant that as a very small child, I w- I had basically like access to the Valhalla of fudge. Like, they just... It was a cornucopia of chocolatey goodness. And as a child who was of a particular persuasion, I enjoyed such things immensely, perhaps too immensely. So, I fudged too close to the sun one season. And I have... It has become impossible for me to think about or smell or discuss fudge without having to like repress the urge to vomit I did not mention this to Huck in the pre-show because (laughs) I felt like it would be better to make this confession on air but like I understand that fudge is good (laughs) but it makes me feel sick so I was, uh, I Every knew, time it comes up. I knew you didn't really like fudge, but I always just chalked it up to you not really liking intensely sweet things. I also don't, yeah. but that is partly why, is yeah. because as a child, I fudged too close to the sun. Yeah. Um, so mine, I have, I have... The worst thing that I had made up until very recently was an old... Um, thing uh, like food experiment that I tried to do where I whereby I instead of using hamburger for a hamburger helper mm-hmm. uh, chopped up a bunch of chicken burgers okay and mixed them in with a stroganoff recipe mm-hmm. and that was fucking terrible um, they were not like regular chicken burgers they were like these special healthy extra dry <laughs> white meat chicken burgers uh, okay um, they were they were expressly processed and and etc cetera, etc cetera. and it was fucking vile like they were vile as chicken burgers and the and the stroganoff sauce wasn't enough did to... not help them at all it was hamburger helper yeah fair enough um it I... did specify hamburger in the name and i should have listened but um i am a vegetarian now i have been a vegetarian for almost a year now has it really been that long? Um, yeah, coming up in like... Uh, well, no, coming up in like May. So, so not that so long. Seven, got, seven uh, months. Yeah, seven, eight months. Um, so not as long as I think. <laughs> that's, a, I was gonna, that's a vast That's a vast difference of time. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's it, Time's really... It's more like a donut-shaped thing. It's, it's very... There's glaze. It's very complicated. But... And, uh, and I have been attempting to level up as a vegetarian. So I started, and I was just... I was eating like salads and I was eating you know chili I ate a lot of vegetarian chili Mm -hmm. and I would make some pad thai and I'm experimenting with stir fries and pasta and I'm sort of slowly improving my vegetarian game Mm -hmm. but the first one of the first things I did on my one of my first vegetarian shopping trips is I bought a bag of lentils and I put it in my cupboard because I was not ready for lentils every like level 9 vegetarian I know um has like a killer lentil soup recipe I do not so I put this bag of lentils I was like when I'm ready I'm coming for you lentils so at one point I decided I was ready and I made some vegetable broth and I chopped up a bunch of vegetables and put them in and I put in the lentils and I soaked the lentils for a long time and and I doled it out, and it, it was all right. It was all right. It was a lentil soup. It was passable. Uh, so next time, of course, I had to take it to the nef- next level. Bought a different color of lentils on the recommendation of a level nine vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I bought more of them because more lentils is obviously better. Like I didn't have enough lentils last time. All right. I had more soup than lentils. So, I put the lentils in and I soaked them and I made the vegetable broth and I added the vegetables like I did last time and I added spices and I stirred it all up and 
had a lot of lentils. And I soaked them for a while. But not what one might refer to as long enough. So what I wound up with, because I had way more lentils than liquid by the end of it, was a sort of vegetarian breakfast cereal that was filled to the brim with half-cooked lentils. <laughs> now, I have eaten... I, 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 I use meal prepping, so when I make food, I make a lot of food. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about that a bit later. But I have eaten most of it. Mm -hmm. But I am definitely now, I'm at that stage where I see it in my fridge, and I'm just like... Uh... And after this, I'm going to make hockey. Didn't we'll, get, we'll do a video of that. But it's not... It's not vile, it's just really so, uh, disappointing. Up, up until you described it, I'm like, oh yeah, I can eat this. But now you describe it, I'm just like, I don't know if I want it. I, don't know. <laughs> I guess maybe for the sake of the vlog. Should, or, I, should have done it first. Should podcast. have done it first. God damn it. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have. Now you kind of psyched me out a little Well, bit. sorry. But it's 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 disappointing. I uh, I mean, it wasn't vile. Uh, but there was one time uh, Sarah was sick. And I went to make her chicken soup. And uh, and I threw barley in it because like I love barley. No barley, and soup. barley and soup is good. Except the problem is, is when I cook, I don't really follow recipes. Not because I think I'm better than them, but I just like like I'll add something, and it's like, oh, but I like barley, so I'm gonna add more. Mm. And so I ended up adding like more barley. Did than you make I chicken should. broth oatmeal? Not quite, but I made. <laughs> I put in a lot of barley, and I knew she liked bow tie noodles or bow tie pasta, so I added a lot of those. But I didn't add a commensurate amount of liquid, and so the noodles and the barley soaked up a lot. So it ended up more like a uh, porridge is too strong of a word, but the, there wasn't a, there wasn't enough liquid in there to really justify it. Really call it a soup. It was a very I'm hearty, familiar with that feeling. It was a hearty stew. I I, I can't even go that far. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, I, I understand your pain of having you, you've you've run out of water. I just I didn't realize it was like a kilogram and a half of lentils. <laughs> it was in fourteen cups of water. A kilogram and a half dry too. Yes, dry. That's the dry. best thing. Is the, no, that's a kilogram a kilogram and a half dry. It's just like how much? How many lentils should I put in? I don't know. All of them. Yes. I don't do non all of lentils recipes. Now I do. There's a there's a reason why there are people smarter than us who make these recipes that yes. we are supposed to follow. Yes, there are. Um, well, I was just sort of inventing my own because I was yeah. like, if you put anything in froth and heat it, like add heat for long enough, you get del delicious soup. Yeah. I just didn't add heat for long enough. No. It happens. Oh man. Don't feel bad. I made. I, I feel made, bad. I made fudge that wasn't actually fudge. I'm still going to eat some of it, and I <laughs> feel bad. I have some in the fridge at work. I feel bad. That's right. Um, but yeah, you have been tracking food. Yeah. Um. I mean, I. I think it kind of goes part and parcel with uh, aiming to be healthier. Um. I mean, obviously they're mutually exclusive. You can focus on one, the other, both, neither. And so, but I started off with fitness and then I got to a point where I said, you know what, I should probably start to focus on nutrition. You know, they, they, they say that 80% of weight loss is, is, you know, the it starts in the kitchen yeah. and, and whatnot. So I became pretty comfortable with the gym that I thought now it's time for me to start focusing on food. But the thing is, is anytime that I've looked at diets and whatnot, I've, I've usually been turned off by it because... It just seems like the restriction is so harsh. It's really hard for me to stick with it. And I think that's a common thing for a lot of people. It's really hard to stick with those kinds of restrictions. So instead, I approached it from a different angle. Um, I follow a fair number of uh, health and fitness people on YouTube, uh, like Alan Thrall from uh, Untamed Strength, um, the guy um, Ray, his last name escapes me, the online coach, um, Nikki Blackletter, I think, is her last name. Uh, she's a, a 
What does she compete? Anyway, she's a fit, uh, I think she does fitness modeling, she, and she does a couple competitions. I don't know if she competes bikini or... I've never seen her compete weightlifting, but I think it's like the bikini posing competitions and stuff, and I think her boyfriend does the same with the swim trunks version of that. Sure. There's there's a name for it, but I'm I not sure. I have no idea what you're talking Beachwear? about. Beachwear? I don't know. But anyways, I, I follow a fair number of uh, health-conscious people online, and a lot of them use like ma- uh, macronutrient tracking, uh, which is largely just tracking carbs, fats, proteins... Uh, and then with a little bit of an eye towards your micronutrients and whatnot. So I thought I'd start with that. But instead of just setting up a macronutrient diet, which is like you... Yeah, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the the basic shakedown is if you take your daily caloric intake and then you know that uh, fat, protein... And carbs um, contribute towards the calories at a certain ratio. So one gram of carbs and one gram of protein each contribute about four calories, and then fat gives you about nine nine calories. Sure. You can you can then set up a ratio of say, you know, fifty percent carbs, thirty percent protein, twenty percent fat kind of deal, and then reverse engineer how much weight of each that you would want to consume, and then. Uh, select foods based on that seems like a huge amount of work it is entirely like way too much work but But could you just consume like soylent you probably could or you're just like all right i need this many carbs and this many much protein this much fat so i'm gonna eat like four eggs and i don't know yeah if three pieces of bread no no and like um i don't know i'll drink like two shots of butter if you if you know how many calories you can do, then you can start it simply. You can just say like, if I want to eat this many calories and I want this distribution. So usually, like you cut your your carbohydrates if you want to lose weight. Whereas if you want to gain muscle, usually you increase your protein right to to feed the body. Um, you can you can go that way. But for me, I had to I had to start backwards and figure out okay if like between my fitness pal and Fitbit, if they say that a guy my size is supposed to consume this many calories per day, then I had I, I wanted to work it backwards so that I could understand it for myself. Okay. I mean, yeah, you, if you say, like, I am a, uh, like, at the time, I am a 325-pound person who is only moderately at most active, mostly sedentary, it'll tell me you need to eat around 2,600 calories and if your macro distribution is like 50, 30, 20, then this is what you eat. It would do it automatically for you. I wanted to do it to learn a little bit about it. Okay. And then I just ate whatever I wanted. Well, I ate kind of healthy, but I ate whatever I wanted for like three or four days. And I intensely tracked what I ate and calculated out the macronutrients. Not, not for anything beyond I just want to know how much of each I'm putting into my body and then kind of appreciate what, like if, if I'm going to overeat and something say carbohydrates, like Mm -hmm. what that looks like. Um, because I kind of grew up in like middle class to low middle class sometimes. And we never, at least I don't remember my mom ever, um, explicitly, buying with the purpose of having a balanced meal like obviously like there's the category of junk food and then there's a category of not necessarily junk food so we would be in the not necessarily category of junk food like um, you can just eat potato chips all uh, as a child or like a potato chip soda slurry yeah i mean you could like Uh, a a chunky iced tea but i mean for the most part it would be like uh frozen tv dinners uh, craft dinner with like hot dogs in it and stuff like that. Uh, whereas like my grandmother, more old school Eastern European, and she just made food that was naturally more balanced because she she made everything from scratch kind of deal, right? So sure. I mean, I'm not knocking my mom. I love my mom, and she raised me oh, very well like from what I'm mom. saying. But um, sure. I, I grew up not thinking about what I was eating, and then that only got worse when I got into university. When I would be really hungry and I would just make two boxes of KD and eat that as a meal. Sometimes I couldn't finish it, but I would like force myself to finish the last like half a cup of prepared food. Because I'm like, I don't want to put it into a container and save it for later. So I'd I'd eat two boxes. And when I was counting my macros and stuff like that, and I looked at, I actually looked at the nutrition guide, like actually read it. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at it, I'm just like, man, there's a lot of calories in this for what I'm eating. I'm not, and there's nothing saying that there's anything wrong with eating calories, but from what, for what I'm eating, 
it's not like you're not getting a lot of bang for your buck. You're getting a lot of calories, but you're not necessarily giving yourself a lot of like good nutrients, and you're going to fill up on crap and then not... It was basically cardboard and cheese sauce. Totally. Totally. So what what the the outcome of it so I, I haven't really adopted a macro based diet in terms of like I don't plan out what I'm going to eat to hit any kind of macro targets um, the reason for why I, like A I'm really lazy to, it takes a lot of work to do that more work than I'm willing to put into it and B I see that more as if I wanted to be if I wanted to treat my body like a machine in terms of like performance, so if I was like more athletic or if I had specific goals that way, I might put that emphasis or I might put value into that exercise. But for the most part, I just want to lose weight or at least maintain and not gain. So I just want to make better choices for when I when I go grocery shopping. If your shopping. body was a machine, what kind of machine would it be? A biological machine. That's very specific. It is because that's exactly what it is. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know. If my body was a machine, I like it, it to would be a, be a Yugo. I want to be a perpetual motion machine. Um, fair. Yeah. I'm, I'll stick with Yugo. It's it's kind of a piece of crap, but it mostly gets to where you're going. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, anyways, I, I've kind of rambled just to, to kind of cap it off. So, yeah, I don't track macronutrients, but the experience of tracking it for a couple of days gave me an appreciation of like the value of food and so now when i select things like bringing salads to work or uh um you know i guess it's just any any of the lunch choices i make or whatever i have that in the back of my mind that yeah this is gonna be crap for me you know it's just a lot of like kind of empty calories but um it is what it is and i can appreciate Mm -hmm. that and make smarter choices around it i used to be a salad luncher um when i had i had a little bar fridge in my office Mm -hmm. And so I would keep the components of salad mm-hmm. in that fridge. And then I would, every day for lunch, create a salad mm-hmm. and consume it. Um, I had, like, lettuce and a little, like, vegetable cheese salad mix that I'd made and some dressing. Mm-hmm. And it was really delicious. And now that I don't have a fridge um, or an office, uh, it is more challenging. And I, but You could buy an ice pack and keep it in your lunch pail. I don't have a lunch pail either. No, you can get a lunch pail, and then you can get an ice pack, and then it'll keep your salad cold. Because I, I make it's already getting very involved. Yeah, no, I make I make salads uh, for work. That's like the the main the main thing. I'll may sometimes bring uh, cut carrots and celery with hummus, and I'll bring some yogurt that I'll top with granola and honey. And I might bring like a piece of fruit, like banana. But the main thing is a salad, and like I even make my own salad dressing. But that's just mixing an oil. Uh, an acid and some sort of flavoring. So for me, it's olive oil mixed with apple cider vinegar mixed with sriracha. That's that's my that's my salad dressing. You're a weirdo. I am weird, but it works. And I, when I eat lunch, it's what I eat every day for lunch. Fair. Yeah, I I I have a different way of doing it. I'm just lazy. I don't like making food in the morning. It's it's enough. Hard, it's hard. No, enough I make for it the me, night before for me to make breakfast. Yeah, Always I don't do, I don't, I don't like doing that either. Um, no, I I I have started tracking food. Yeah. And it is really weird. I'm a notorious cheater, and I know when I cheat because I feel guilty. <laughs> um, for instance, we get pizza on podcast night, which is not super healthy at all, and we both eat more pizza than we probably should. Oh, God, yeah. And the pizza comes with sodas, um, which I drink. And uh, Huck also gets three sodas because it, it comes with a six-pack of soda. Mm-hmm. And Huck never drinks all his soda, mm. so I also drink Huck's soda. <laughs> Because no one the fuck else in my house is going to drink it. And otherwise, I'm just going to build a giant wall of Sprite. You might as well. So, I drink it. Um, soda is my, like, super vice. <laughs> but, and, and because I feel guilty, I cheat on the, on the tracking, which means I don't get accurate numbers. Or if it's, like, slightly vague, I just, like, fuck it and fill in something else. So, I'm really not good at it. But the notion of tracking it always affects... What I eat, my, mm-hmm. my, my general feeling whenever I want something like that is, is like like a junk food. It's like if I have to struggle with doing it, then it is not worth doing. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of full stop. But I have, in the last year, recently made some... Or in the last year, I've made some very large changes because previous to being a vegetarian, um, I was eating in a keto fashion, which... 
I was not super big on when when a bunch of my friends started you know, first did it, uh, but I know a couple of people who've been doing it for years, including my roommate, and it is excellent. Um, you know, it's an excellent sort of way to change. If you are a meat eater, it is great a great way to like change your diet for weight loss and mm-hmm. still eat food that is yummy and mm-hmm. and I made some really yummy food. Um, and I ate like mostly pork and cream cheese and whatever. And I lost a ton of weight too. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, like paying attention to what you're eating is the best way to keep it under control. Mm-hmm. Uh, and normally that is not, I guess, a thing that people worry about. But when you are a super huge dude. I'm not even, like, I guess that big. I'm, like, 340. Mm-hmm. I'm bigger than you. Yeah. Uh, at least girthy. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm heavier than you at any rate. Um, but I'm, I'm no Donald Trump. Um, but there is uh, there's a sense in which you... you Like, it is, it is a thing that you feel the need to monitor. Mm-hmm. Um, or not. I've never been sufficiently body positive to be like, man, fuck it, I'm just going to eat all the chips I want. Also, because it make, makes me feel like garbage. Because mm-hmm. it turns out I'm old. I can't do that anymore. But yeah, the, the shift from going from like a high protein, low carb thing to being a vegetarian, where I was like, okay, every basically everything except for eggs that was cutting, that was providing protein to me is now gone um I best learn to start eating beans and lentils because lentil like one of the things with lentils is lentils are full of protein yeah they're really good for you if your vegetarian power level is over 9,000 yeah if you're sitting if, like if you're if you are a vegetarian Vegeta it, that joke is really funny by the way if you didn't <laughs> laugh at that Go and watch some Dragon Ball Z. Go and watch some Dragon Ball Z abridged. I'll put it in the show notes. But if you are a vegetarian Vegeta and you're like Prince of the Vegetarian Sands, then lentils are you're the bomb. I don't even know why you're saying vegetarian Vegeta because Vegeta is vegetable. Yes, exactly. You are you are um, doubling up on. I, sand. however, am a like I'm like a vegetarian Yamcha. <laughs> like I'm like I'm like ten steps below vegetarian Krillin. <laughs> sort of with the band <laughs> and and thus lentils as you as, as we are well aware are not my jam yet yet I would, I would prefer to be a part I'm of the training I want to be a part of the Ginyu force <laughs> well wouldn't everyone Rukum oh yes <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't everyone given the choice but <laughs> uh, no what it, what it meant was that like, but at the same time I, I'm like oh I can eat carbs again mm. Uh, which I have done with gusto with things like pasta and rice and bread. Mm-hmm. But it, I'm still sort of figuring it out, partly mostly because I'm lazy. Mm-hmm. Um, and my laziness leads me to do things that are easy rather than things that are worthwhile. But it's also my, my, my general food practice is to meal prep. Mm-hmm. So the only food I'm really interested in is stuff that I can make three kilograms of, like two to ha- two and a half to three kilograms of, and that's usually pasta, stir fry, pad thai. I really want to learn to make a curry, but I haven't bothered yet. I can well, I can help you make a tofu variant of a chicken. Curry I am not anywhere near tofu level yet. No, it's fine. It's um, just uh, press out all the water so that it's not waterlogged, and then you just have to let it sit in the, the seasoning for a while. Yup. I'm not anywhere near there yet. Um, I haven't even made an attempt at Shannon's vegetarian buffalo wings, which I love, and they're delicious, and I really need to get a recipe for them. But, um, but yeah, like, like, like it's, it's those four things. It's soups, because I'll make a huge pot of it, or a huge pan of it, and then dole it out into little containers. So I'll have like, you know, 12 containers and I'll throw them all in my fridge. And that becomes uh, lunch and dinner until they're gone mm-hmm. and breakfast when I'm lazy. Well, because every morning in my house is sort of a coordination problem because one of us gets up late and needs to be at work for eight. And one of us gets up early but needs to be at work for nine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So there's this interesting middle ground where um, we don't want to... There, there's only enough physical room in my kitchen for one person. And we don't take showers together, and we only have one shower. So there's this there's this sort of intricate dance of apartment yielding that goes on mm-hmm. in the mornings. And sometimes I lose that coordination game, and it means that I can't get in there and like make an omelet for breakfast, and mm-hmm. I just got to eat something quick. Because if I go to work and I don't eat breakfast, I get all cranky. Mm-hmm. And nobody likes that. Um, and meal prepping is useful for that, because I never need to worry about it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I if, if if I leave for work at quarter to nine, I worst case scenario have a container of breakfast that I can eat at work, um, and I have a container that I can eat for lunch, and often those are containers of two different things. And yeah, sometimes I'm the guy sitting at my desk at nine thirty, eating pasta and uh, checking my email, but meh. Um, and so the but the meal prepping is essential. Like I'm just sufficiently lazy, culinarily that I can't be bothered to make food every day. Mm-hmm. I can't be bothered to wash my dishes every day, especially in a house with three other people. I can't do that, and I live by myself. <laughs> I just I can't be bothered. I just I'll make a big huge thing, and then I will cook or I will do all the dishes, and then I will be happy that I've been a good housemate, mm-hmm. and then I will. Like, leave the kitchen, never to return, for, until the next weekend when I will make more food. And I sort of rotate recipes in and out so I don't get super bored of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that works uh, as long as I don't make anything that's uh, horrible, like this time. So, buying food. Yeah. I mean, we want to talk about our relationship with food. That means talking about where we buy food. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that came up in the pre-show was that we both... Weirdly prioritize buying local. Mm-hmm. And for me, I, I live in downtown Kitchener, and I'm right by the farmer's market. There's a bunch of grocery stores. Um, there's a bunch of international grocery stores. There's, there's two uh, Asian supermarkets. Mm-hmm. There's a uh, Latino or like a, a supermarket. Uh, well, not a supermarket, but a, but a market. Um... There's an Egyptian market uh, in the in the little hasty market thing. You can buy all kinds of uh, Egyptian groceries. Mm-hmm. And on top of all that, there's a real grocery store. And uh, like way up at the other end, and I realized that the statement real grocery store is not a good one. Uh, there's a like regular uh, Western grocery store up at the, the, the mall, which is only like eight blocks from downtown. And there's a little hippie health food store, which is where I buy my lentils. Yeah. Um, and for me, buying local is about, uh, A, buying things within walking distance because mm-hmm. I'm a pedestrian, and B, supporting local businesses. Like, spending my money around my house because too many things around me have closed, and if they have closed, I would like to at least not feel guilty about it. Because mm-hmm. you always, I always see those things in the paper when, when something closes around here, and... People are like, well, it's a shame. And I'm like, well, how much money did you spend there? Because mm-hmm. I know I think it's a shame, but I didn't really go there either because it was easier to go to other places. But as a pedestrian, it's easier for me to yeah. walk downtown and buy stuff unless I need, like, Western white people groceries like frozen pizzas. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I'm perfectly on board with um, supporting local businesses uh, for me, it tends to come down to uh, I'm a convenience shopper, um, mm. so I go to the same Zares even though I've moved. Um, it used to be that I would go there. That's dedication. Well, so yeah, I used to like last last term I would go there because I was also dropping the dog off. Uh, uh, so it was I was in the neighborhood anyways. Now. I don't have that excuse now. I literally am driving across town just to go to that grocery store. So like, I know the layout. Uh, I know the cashier that I usually go to because she works uh, Tuesday nights, uh, and she's also you're an unbelievable creature of habit. Man. I know. I totally am. Like it's like you're. You know you're. You're like, you're, you're like I, I go to the same barber. I go to the same Zares. I use this. I, I go to the same cashier. 
Yeah. At the Zares, I, I like I use the same checkout. She she is uh, she goes to Chainsaw periodically, but she's also a student in one of the engineering programs that I work at, like at the college. So it's just it's, it's you know I always thought of myself as being like a a little bit of a random person, but no, I am surprisingly like. Ha- habitually well, predictable. The highly ordered huckle. You really are lawful, I, Ryan. I really am lawful. Like it's it's one of those things that when, when I find something that I like, and I and it, like I'm willing to pay for that service or quality or whatever. Like with the barber, <laughs> I, like I I got my hair cut on Saturday. Mick makes me look good. I treat Mick like my preacher. Basically, I, I go I. When I'm getting my hair cut, like, Mick is my barber, and I, I treat, like, sitting down in his chair, like, confession. I go to confession once a month. I, I, I sit down, and I'm like, forgive me, Father, for sin. It's been one month since my since my last haircut. Do you then confess all your sins to I, Mick? I confess, I confess my sins. He confesses his. We talk about the crappy things in our life, and that's that's how we do it. Wow. So when I go to the barber, and I actually go to the same barber as Ryan now. I, I Mick cut my hair the last time. Yeah. Um, which he did an excellent job, despite my completely vague instructions. <laughs> but uh, my my response upon being at the barber is to engage as little as possible and get my hair cut in monastic silence. So yeah, I mean, I sometimes do that. Mick will tell like, Mick can tell when when I'm trying to like when I want to stay quiet or whatever. And he, I let him talk more than me because I find if I'm talking, it's probably shifting my head enough that it's going to be awkward to get a good haircut. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that was how I got a mohawk. Uh, but, I don't know the, the way I see it. Don't worry. When Mick, I sit down and Mick Mick's, makes that mohawk look good. Yeah, when I sit down in Mick's chair and he looks at me and I look at him and he says the usual and I said yeah, except just keep the bangs a little bit longer and he goes yeah because it lies down better. Bang! I don't have to explain nothing. <laughs> nothing. He knows exactly what I want, and we do it. I gave him. I gave him a Tim Hortons gift card for Christmas because oh, he drinks man. a lot of coffee, and I, like that was my Christmas gift to him. I always tip him well. He treats me well, and I was like, I am a creature of habit. Bringing it back to the conversation, so I go to the same grocery store. I know the layout when I'm when I'm doing grocery prep. So I, I have a uh, I have a whiteboard on my refrigerator. Of course. That that when I run out of stuff, I, write, I make notes on there. So I check my list. I look in the fridge to see what I need that I didn't note that I'd run out of. Plus, uh, because I go to Zares, uh, it's a part of like, the President's Choice Network. So I use their PC Points app to see what's got deals. Then what I will literally do is, before I go, I will close my eyes and do a mental walk through the st- of the store and try to figure out <laughs> what else I need to get. Before I actually go to the store. And I do this... Are, are you grocery shopping? No, I'm pre-grocery shopping. I, I know, in it's, my mind. I know it's so weird, but for me, it's 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 an attempt... So, it's kind of like the idea, um, don't, gro- don't grocery shop when you're hungry. Do, like, do all those things that you do to avoid um, uh, extraneous spending, uh, buying things you don't need, spur of the moment. So, I try to just stick... Like, I, always, I always write out my list, and I stick to the list. If I go to look at it and it's too expensive for what I want to pay for it, I'll cross it off my list and be like, okay, I didn't get it this time. Like, that's, that, for me, I, I try to keep my costs down, uh, I try to build up as many points as I can, and like, uh, uh, I haven't, I don't really use the points, I ended up building up $200 in free groceries, for my birthday, I gave half of that, I went and I bought $100 worth of groceries and gave it to the food bank. Like, it's not really buying or getting points for anything in particular, I just like building the points as a Must game. collect all the points. Must collect all the points. Oh, man. So, yes, I will do a mental walkthrough a of the mental, grocery store oh and try to try to, um, try to pick up the things or try to, like, imagine or anticipate the things that I'm going to need that I didn't write down on my list. I'm imagining you, like, subsequently entering the grocery store. You know, you've got your cart out in front of you and suddenly you, you're you're, you're like your consciousness transpose like transfers from the mind to the moment and there's this like jedi like motherfucking gun kata flow through the store as you're like surfing around on your on, on, on your cart snatching things from various shelves <laughs> stuffing them inside bank your cart off a display that you knew was there yep. because it was in your mind exactly. I know, I know that. that is how I roll <laughs> that is it's, 
So, so yeah, that's that's how I, I, I shop. <laughs> now, having said all that, I get a lot of joy going to the St. Jacob's Food Market. <laughs> I get a lot of joy going to the market. Do you mentally go there, too? No, I, I've only been there two or three times, so it, it's not like I can do that. The problem with going to the St. Jacob's Market, and conversely the Kitchener Market, is as a non-pedestrian... Well, you can't really be a pedestrian and go to the St. Jacob's Market. It's a hell of a bus ride. <laughs> But it is super inconvenient for me to go to the, the um, St. Jacob's Market because, like, the markets uh, in the non-summer months and stuff, it's really only Wednesdays and Saturdays. I can't go Wednesday morning because I have, like, my full-time job to go to. Saturdays are really inconvenient. I, I know I'm just complaining about this unnecessarily, but <laughs> Saturdays are really inconvenient to get up and go to the market when I've been working at the bar Friday night and I don't come home until at least 3 o'clock in the morning. So for me to get up and go get out to the market at a decent time is a little bit of a pain in the ass. And, and then I do all my the rest of my... Um, uh, Adult errands and stuff Saturdays like, that's where I go uh, like to the hardware store if I need to pick up stuff haircuts and whatnot that all happens Saturdays um, and then the Kitchener Market I just never really thought to go because driving downtown in on Saturday to go to the market is gee brutal. Ryan if only you knew someone who lived right in the middle of downtown and to be fair I didn't think of that until we were in the pre-show <laughs> he's like I, I live right next door you can park here and walk I'm like oh yeah it's just down the hill it is it is I, I very much enjoy the Kitchener Market, partly yeah. because it is a great place to eat breakfast mm-hmm. and hear live music and hang out with people. It is, I do live really close to it, so people will park at my house and we all yeah. walk down, which is very nice. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also a weird and interesting social space where mm-hmm. I will see people from my former grad supervisor yeah. to people I know from through music to like people I've just you know seen in the community or work, work with on community projects people i work with it is a weird social space yeah because it just attracts such a high quantity of people who live downtown and the venn diagram of people i know and people who live within walking distance of me is very yeah. very strongly aligned now we're running a little long so i'm gonna I, I, I have to tell the story we're gonna go in a little bit of overtime folks so bear in with oh, me you're, you're a monster did you tell the story in your mind before yes okay I had to okay well if you told it in your say. mind it has to happen okay so, uh, the reason why we're talking about buying local uh, is, so, as I said, I don't have a problem with supporting local businesses as long as it's convenient, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm the most terrible person for, that is, that is not supporting local I'm not going to say that's an unusual argument. I'm just going to yeah. say it's a piece of shit argument. It's a piece of shit argument. But anyways, so, um, I was challenged to buy local, not so not local businesses, but buy stuff that was produced locally uh, in the winter months. Which is really weird. So it's really hard to buy vegetables and stuff in the winter. Mm. And you know what? Like, I'm not a vegetarian, but I don't really buy a lot of meat just for cost reasons. Like, if you look in my fridge, uh, right now there's no there's no meat. There's cheeses and stuff, but there's no meat. All the yeah, meat's in the tomorrow freezer. is your grocery shopping day. You've already done that shop in your mind. But, Are you buying meat? Well, I have to double check the. the usually, I only buy meat if it, if it's on sale. That's one thing that I don't plan to buy. <laughs> it's if I go in and I look, and I'm like, okay. Chicken, chicken breasts, like boneless, skinless chicken breasts, two ninety nine a pound. Yeah, I'll buy it. If it's more than that, don't bother. Like kind of deal. Like uh, I'm oddly specific about that, mm-hmm. unless I really want to like make a roast or do something else. So I'm opportunistic with my meat. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I was challenged to buy local, and in this case, local was defined as around uh, no further than like eighty to a hundred kilometers away. So I mean, it was geographically specific that this was. At what point do you just start raiding people's gardens? <laughs> well, I probably should have. So, anyways, um, so drop off their roof like Spider Man. <laughs> I, I. What are you doing? I invaded your garden in my mind. <laughs> I'm never going to live that down, No, you're really not. Um, So I I was given this challenge before Christmas, and the challenge came due uh, like two weeks after January started. Um, And so all through the Christmas break, I bought groceries before Christmas, just enough to get me to Christmas, because once once it was the season, I was with my parents and stuff. I didn't need to buy groceries until I got back from, from family. And then I didn't buy groceries because I had leftovers for the next, like, two weeks. So when it finally came time for me to go back to work, I didn't have enough leftovers to make lunches for work. Again, salads and stuff. 
and I had to do this local challenge. So I go to the grocery store, and I'm, I'm looking for local stuff. And the best I could find was Ontario, like the Ontario uh, agriculture symbols. You know, we, the, we grow in Ontario yep. kind of deal, right? So I know that didn't really follow the spirit of the of the challenge. So I, I bought the bare essentials that I needed to, to survive at lunch for, at work. And I'm like, okay, I'll go to this place called Dutchies, which I know is a little bit more conscientious for local stuff. The problem is, is Dutchies, while, I mean, it was a, still a 10-minute drive away from my house, it was really inconvenient to get to by the time they closed during rush hour traffic and whatnot. And I only buy groceries Tuesdays. <laughs> no, no, we're aware. In my system, we're I only buy groceries on system. Tuesdays. And so... Go and respect the system. So going to Dutchies became a little bit of a hassle that I just didn't want to deal with. And I had to buy local. I had n- I didn't know anywhere else where I could buy local food reliably other than like there's this uh, there's an Instagram account where there's people who uh, they set up a system where they source local food and then they'll deliver it to your house. There's I, Legacy Greens, which is downtown, which sells vegetables. See, I, I didn't know about this. Nine to seven every day. Wait, that's not um, the Working Centers group. Is no, it? the Working Center group is different, which yeah. is the Queen Street Commons. They also sell vegetables. I've, that are all I have grown. found out about a lot of this since the challenge, to be fair to me. But anyways, <laughs> again, we're in overtime. I'm going to try to wrap this up. So, because I had to buy local, but I couldn't be bothered to go to Dutchies, I didn't buy groceries for two weeks. <laughs> it was, it was... Did ethically, you at least eat locally in your mind? I, I, I ate locally within my pantry. I just, I kept looking <laughs> for as much food as I could what, find out of my what pantry. What is this? I don't know, but it's local to me because it's within three feet. Yeah. Are you just doing shots of soy sauce now, Ryan? No, it was like rice and frozen vegetables out of the freezer and stuff. When I bought them, not local, but they were local because they were in my apartment. Things that are definitely local. Rice. Yeah. No, also totally. pineapple. I know. But, yeah, so it, in my mind, in order to satisfy the terms of the buy local challenge, <laughs> it was ethically more satisfactory to me to not buy food than to to like give in and buy other food because I had to get like, it was it was one of those weird you can drive things. out to Hurley's I th- you say these now I should have brought you in on this challenge but <laughs> so yes there was a time when I had to buy local and instead of buying local I just <laughs> didn't buy groceries <laughs> oh man if you buy local leave a comment. <laughs> Um, and tell me where your favorite place is oh, so that please. I know where to go. That way, if, if Huck is ever in your locality, he's not going to be at a loss. And he can look it up on Google, so we can go there in his mind first. Uh, but other than that, uh, we will catch you guys later. Yeah, Thanks for uh, sticking around for the extra time. <laughs> if you want more updates, you can subscribe on iTunes with the link below, yeah. uh, which is in the show notes. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Woodsuit, mm-hmm. because we're, we're Twitter nerds sometimes. Sometimes. Yes. Also, if you have a great recipe for lentil soup or lentil <laughs> stew, for the love of God, please leave it in the comments. <laughs> Preferably level nine or higher. <laughs> if there's a, like a level five lentil recipe, I'm really looking forward to it. But either way. <laughs> level five split pea soup. I'm Jim. I'm Ryan. And we're signing off. All right, stay local. <laughs> anyway, I just... You would never know. Doesn't seem fair. I don't know. You edit me saying, or you edit out things that you say that are dumb and leave all the stuff in. So I don't see why we can't just swap it all around. Oh, man.